parts required are standard GoPro accessories. These are purchased on eBay under £3 each, £2.50. That's about um, under $5, around €4. Euros. You need two of these wrist straps and two of these fittings for um, seat post or, or, or handlebars on a motorbike or a, or a bicycle. Of course these are standard GoPro mounts not designed to fit to each other. As you can see they have the three tines on and they don't fit in with each other. What one has to do is to take this one Pop a nail in there, tap it with a hammer. This nut comes out. And then you have to remove the nut holder from this side here. I merely took a hacksaw to it and then filed it down to make it nice and smooth and then as you can see it will fit into the fitting like that and can be screwed together. The next step is to fit the wrist straps to the helmet and this is done by slipping the velcro through the vents and securing it on the inside this is a little bit of a, fiddly, a fiddly job and you should use something uh, like a flat screwdriver or a flat knife, blunt knife, to push them through the slots uh, because the Velcro catches. But once it's through, it's fairly simple to pull tight and affix inside. One has to check for distance to ensure that the gimbal holder will fit that you haven't left too great a distance between them and what I want you to do is to ensure the front one was in a position to fit around this area of the arm so it took some time but eventually I did get the all of the strap fittings through pulled through and secured on the velcro to end up with this at the front and this at the back fitted the two modified upright arms in place ensuring that you get the hole lined up this takes a little bit of fiddling to get through but I found the best way was once I'd got the hole lined up to screw through because it pulls it into position like so. A couple of these plastic fittings that come with any light, bicycle light which goes which can go round the, uh, the seat post or round the handlebars to protect them as we tighten. I put them round here because there's only a very small area that you can grip onto. It protects the, the gimbal holder itself and also leaves a little room so that you can operate this button that changes the gimbal settings. After that it's quite straightforward to fit the arm into place. Of course you won't be doing it leaning over the top of a camera and therefore it will be slightly less fiddly. But that pushes through there we take a few turns not making sure not to over tighten it and effectively we've got the first fitting after that we push back against the elastic and push the rear fitting into place And again, a few turns just to hold there. it. 
making sure it's upright. Tightening down. Making sure the back one is all the way through and tightening down. So again, don't over tighten. Try to ensure that you have an even tightness on both arms. And that is now firmly fixed. There is a little bit of movement on this elastic, but that is taken out when the arm is fitted. It effectively stops it pulling apart and it remains quite firm. As you can see when we turn it on, everything works normally. As you can see, once it's in place, it's really quite a firm fitting. After fitting it all, I did loosen it off slightly, uh, pull the front piece backwards, pull the back fitting forwards, generally keeping it quite loose at first, not overly tightened, just keep moving it about till I got a nice square fitting here. I managed to get the front and back virtually parallel, um, a nice downward angle. Everything's pointing in the right direction. And, and we can see now that it's all tightened up, this is really quite firm. I don't see this going anywhere. And as I say, be very careful not to over tighten, particularly at this end. This end has the fitting, the, uh, the metal fitting with the screw thread inside, so that's okay. But I don't think that's going to turn anywhere. And that's certainly going to work very well when I take it out tomorrow morning.